So thanks so much for having me here today. Um, I'm as much looking forward to the conversations after this as I am in the opportunity to speak with you today, right side up. Um, so the title of my talk is Making Inclusion a Core Feature because of course, software and people are not something you can decouple. Um, people build software and um, how well we're enabled from a diverse perspective is, is central and a, a core feature. So uh, my name is Emma Irwin. I work on Microsoft's Open Source Programs Office, or OSPO, um, which is an in increasingly something that you'll hear in, in uh, technology companies, in institutions, in government agencies. More and more OSPOs are starting to pop up as um, people realize that having that centralized approach to open source is really beneficial. Um, I live on uh, Vancouver Island in beautiful British Columbia on the unceded territory of the Souk First Nation. And just so you know where I'm going with all of this, um, I am going to introduce you a little bit to diversity, equity, inclusion in open source, at least how I've thought about it, some of the research that I've done and how it all fits in, hopefully with what you're doing. Uh, I'm still learning about uh, a lot of your work. I'm going to introduce you to something called the Chaos Project, which is an open source collaboration of projects working on metrics around inclusion, but also a lot more in open source. I'm going to walk you through some of those metrics and maybe give you some of the backgrounds about how they came to be and how at Microsoft we are uh, enacting those. And then the notion of inclusion bug. So looking for uh, using these types of metrics to uh, report and fix uh, bugs around the inclusion of people. So uh, I give a lot of workshops at uh, Microsoft to you know, help people ground themselves in, in what we mean around um, diversity, equity, inclusion. It can be kind of, it's become sometimes something people say, but don't really think about the meaning behind it. And I love this particular quote around diversity is a number, right? You can have people in your community or building with you, but they may not be having a very nice time. So counting them often isn't necessarily a fair thing. <laughs> um, but inclusion is how we make them feel welcome, how we make them people feel included. Um, it's also something <clears throat> um, that we need to be intentional about. So, uh, and then equity is the outcome, right? That's, this is what we're after. And this is what um, a lot of the metrics in the work that I'll talk about is, is directly uh, focused on. And I think it's a good question to ask ourselves if you're whether you've built an open source uh, or whether you've released an open source project yet or not, or you've thought about building open source communities, um, it's a good question to start with, you know, why? <laughs> why why take your code or your project and put it uh, in a public repository for others to collaborate on? And I always I also like to help people think about what the, the wrong answers are to this question. Like you might think you have some, <clears throat> um, Good answers, and so some of the wrong answers that I see um, in my time at Microsoft, but I also worked at Mozilla before this, and um, I work have worked in universities, Royal Roads University, uh, here on Vancouver Island as well. And the wrong answer can be to, you know, for kind of that free labor for help because I can't do everything I need to do. Um, and while that's true, that that the outcome of releasing an open project might bring others in, the you know uh, you. It's an investment. Releasing an open source project is actually investment in the beginning. Um, it's not. To, it's also not to make code available for download. You can certainly do that, um, but when you're releasing an open source project with a license, and then it means a lot. It's a lot more than a download. And and so why we do release open source projects in, in communities is because we have goals for external collaboration, right? Like. Um, and we should always have goals for external co collaboration. So whether that, you know, we want to have user adoption of, of software that we're building, we want to have people test things, we want to bring others in with ideas, um, we should always be thinking about how we're enabling people to be successful in those projects. So uh, this is another kind of grounding question uh, I like people to think about before they dive into open source by default. <clears throat> And I'll just say as I talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, like I mean, this is kind of like a 2.0 um, version of, of, of diversity. I'm not going to try and convince anyone that diversity matters for innovation uh, or for open source projects. And that's well documented. Um, nor am I going to get into the stories of, of, of why open source is actually less diverse uh, than tech overall. So um, when, one more recent number is uh, using women as the canary in the coal mine is there's 4% of women 
uh, in open source technology well compared with like 20% in technology overall. So even though that 20% isn't great, it's been even worse in open source. And there's lots and lots of storytelling. Uh, people have been sharing their experiences for you know a decade or more, which you know we're we're definitely um, should be grateful that people have shared their stories and challenged us to do better. So I encourage you, uh, if you haven't read any of these stories, they're <laughs> readily available on the internet. So this is like 2.0 version. And there's a, a speaker and a, an educator. I don't know if you've heard of Kim Creighton, but she runs an educational anti-racist uh, education uh, series. And um, there's this great quote that she uses all the time that intention without strategy is chaos. Because I think when you look at the history of open source, a lot of us meant well, right? Our intentions were good. Um, even the history of meritocracy, which has this idea of everyone starts in the same place, you know, came with an intention that you know, we would welcome everyone in, but, but without strategy, that's just not in practice how it works. And nor is open equal to inclusion. Uh, and historically we thought, well, it's open. Anyone can come, anyone can participate. But without specific guardrails and um, this inclusive strategy, it's just not being the case. So um, I like to emphasize that. And finally, before I kind of get into some of the metrics, uh, you know, I want to be clear that when I talk about inclusion and open source and enabling the success of people building software, I don't just mean the communities that we build and invite uh, to build with us. I, um, so this is a picture from my time at Mozilla. Um, I was part of the community even before I started working at Mozilla. And in this picture, there's a number of community members uh, contributors to the Mozilla project. There's also staff members, interns, and former staff members. So there's no like tidy line between, um, you know, people who are paid to work on open source, people who come to contribute and learn. Five and minutes. so we really, oh, sorry, go ahead. That's five minutes. Uh, that's five minutes in or five minutes left? Five minutes left. Okay, thank you. Um, and so it's really important to, um, to think holistically about that. One of the projects that I work on and brought my research to is the Chaos Project. I'll, I'll share some of these links later, um, is getting intentional about systematically changing, strategically changing how we think about um, metrics in open source. So there's a number of different working groups. One is diversity and inclusion. Um, and there's, I think it's seven different focus areas. Each has a set of metrics associated with it, which I'll quickly walk through. Um, the first is governance. So we, uh, and I'll just say that this comes from research, from my research, from a number of other organizations and uh, people have come together to kind of build on each other's work. This is not just one statement, but a collaborative. Uh, so things like diversity of boards, um, code of conduct enforcement, uh, and who owns decision making. This comes from research that specifically I did, learning that there's lack of strategy to address toxic behavior. Um, and that was often because we had code of conducts in our repositories, but didn't really do anything to enforce them. So at Microsoft, we have our code of conduct, we uh, enforce it, we have something like a first aid triage process to make sure that people understand what to do, how they're supported in the organization. Uh, so they're never on their own. We also have a course that all paid staff uh, are asked to take so they understand their role in building inclusive communities. We also provide a course, uh, at least at Mozilla, we're working on this still at Microsoft to make sure that all of our community members also understand these same basics. <clears throat> We've released um, a project called Minimal Viable Governance, which helps for inclusive decision making. Uh, and I could also share a link with this a bit later. There's a number of metrics around communication and inclusivity, um, which you can kind of see here, things like technical jargon, technical jargon, being inclusive of non-native English speakers. Um, I won't read this to you, but there's a lot of different ways that we uh, encourage people to be inclusive around communication in their projects, things like using people's pronouns, time zone friendly. Event inclusion, uh, open source, lots of people come together at events like this one to talk about the software that we're building. And there's actually a badging project that this, this event or any in-person event can go and have your event actually measured to see is your event inclusive. And this is another link that I'll give you afterwards. And you can put a badge on your page to show, yeah, guess this event is taking inclusiveness of uh, its participants seriously. It's validated by this project of peers. So it's not just an automatic thing. There's um, peers who review it. So this is really great. Uh, inclusive leadership, 
uh, historically, uh, uh, open source has been a gatekeeping community for a number of reasons. So we have something called inclusive, a checklist for inclusive metrics, which take all of those attributes that we know make uh, leadership in open source projects inclusive. You can walk through that. Um, I have a blog post which I can share on how to apply those. Basically, you embed those in your leadership goals. You don't create them separately. A diversity can't be an afterthought. Uh, it, it's often like quality assurance or testing. It's something people try and do in the end, but um, that's not the way it works. And then, of course, as I mentioned, this in, applies to inclusive to in, internal communities as well. So I'm almost done here. I'm I'm not sure if my time is. <laughs> it's a little bit faster than I thought. Um, yeah, project well, community places. Well, yeah, a minute. A minute. Yeah. Okay. So project community places are another you know, big subject, but, you know, you can dig into this. This is the thing that I'm trying to put on your radar here is if you want to dig into any of these metrics, you can. We um, are trying to establish the idea that reporting some, an inclusion bug in software is something anyone can do. Um, I have a checklist, which I can share with you. You can go to any project, you know, providing it safe. And, you know, like part of it is that people are angry who run that project and report those. I have a label on one of my repositories, you know, for example, um, if you have a GitHub repository where the, the branch is still named master, that's a great inclusion bug to open today on your GitHub project to get the maintainers to pay attention to that. It also starts to set a tone that that matters to your community. And of course, recognition. So uh, there's lots of different metrics around that. And uh, just finally, prioritizing self-care. Anyone that works on the inclusion of others is, you know, that empathetic, um, the role of empathy in a community is hard and taking care of yourself, taking care of others who are doing this work is really, 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 really important. <laughs> I can't say enough about that. And then this all comes back to what I was saying that you know, equity is the outcome we're after. Um, for, it, for it to be successful, we really need to think about metrics for inclusion and just start, right? Just start. It, I, I just give you a lot of information, but um, it's just a matter of um, getting started and just leaving our projects um, in more ethical place that we found them. I think that's a great call to action. Uh, hopefully you agree. Thank you.